Earlier this year, the government of Canada tabled legislation to regulate the use of artificial intelligence. Frankly, it's an embarrassment. The government should go right back to the drawing board and consult with people who know what they're talking about. They should also look at what is being done in Europe so that our approach is consistent with emerging international norms. Hi, my name is David Fraser. I'm a privacy internet and technology lawyer with the Canadian law firm McGinnis Cooper. I also teach internet and media law at the Schulich School of Law at Dalhousie University. In this channel, I try to provide educational and informative content about Canadian privacy and technology law. You should check out the full disclaimer below, but you should know that I'm going to give you a very high-level overview of a pretty complicated and nuanced subject with lots of gaps. You should also know that my clients include companies that provide artificial intelligence systems and companies that use them. Any opinions expressed are mine alone and should not be attributed to my firm or any of its clients. The Government of Canada tabled the Digital Charter Implementation Act 2022 on June 16, 2022. It has just sat at first reading like Bill C-11 before it without being referred to committee and without making any progress at all. We do expect that it will come back to life sometime this fall. While much of the attention has been focused on the first two parts of the bill, which will implement the Consumer Privacy Protection Act and the Personal Information and Data Protection Tribunal Act, the third part has not gotten much attention. To be honest, the Artificial Intelligence and Data Act cannot attract much commentary because it is incomplete and largely meaningless without, being without us being able to see the regulations, which will give most of its meaning. It's the first step of a work in progress, a skeleton, but we can't tell if it will be a mammal or a reptile. You may recall that Bill C-27 is largely a reintroduction of Bill C-11 from 2019, which was the Digital Charter Implementation Act of 2019. That bill did not include a proposed AI law. If it had, we would have at least have had the time between 19 or 2019 and 2022 to provide comments on what was missing. But largely, out of the blue, the government introduced Bill C-27 and seems determined to continue to include all of it as one package. In the meantime, the European Union has also been looking at regulating artificial intelligence. While it is still a work in progress, we can underscore the word progress. Over the last several years, the EU has released discussion papers and solicited comments. Then they introduced a draft law and solicited more comments. Many, many stakeholders have had a chance to consider the proposals and weigh in on them. None of that has happened in Canada, other than maybe some behind closed door discussions. The process that led to this bill is embarrassing, as is the substance of it. But speaking of, I should probably include some substance, so on with the show. Keep in mind that what is regulated and how it is regulated is largely left to regulations and thus presently unknown and unknowable. The AIDA is the beginning of a work in progress and largely appears to be an afterthought as part of the government's digital charter agenda. What's weird is that it doesn't fit within the current or proposed structures of the so-called digital charter. For example, it doesn't make use of the new tribunal that is established earlier in the bill. The Act applies to regulated activities and requires measures to mitigate risks of harm and biased output related to high-impact systems. What much of this means is left to the regulations, which haven't been shared. Some key concepts and the intent of the law are set out in the bill. Artificial intelligence system is very broadly defined but limited to processing data about human activities. It is a technological system that autonomously or partly autonomously processes data related to human activities through the use of a genetic algorithm, a neural network, machine learning, or another technique in order to generate content or make decisions, recommendations, or predictions. The Act's purposes are also set out and are justifiably limited to international or interprovincial uses since the federal government doesn't have jurisdiction over purely local uses of AI. It's meant to regulate AI and to prohibit uses of artificial intelligence systems that may result in serious harm to individuals or harm to their interests. Interestingly, the government has decided to carve out some of the most potentially harmful and dangerous uses of artificial intelligence, namely the use of AI by the government itself, including national security and national defense entities. The bill prescribes regulated activities to include the design, development, use, and making available of AI systems, including data related to human activities for such purposes. I think it's notable that research and development related to AI is captured within these rules, when it probably should be limited to the promotion or deployment of systems that might actually affect the real world. The bill regulates the use of anonymized data in AI systems, but how it does so is left to the regulations. 
The bill largely regulates and polices high impact systems, but, but what is high impact? That's left to the regulations. Anyone who is responsible for any AI system has to assess whether that system is high impact. How they need to do that will be left to the regulations. They'll have to establish measures to identify, assess, and mitigate the risks of harm or biased output that could result from the use of the system. How they need to do that is left to the regulations. They also have to put in place mitigation measures and monitor them. How they need to do that will be left to the regulations. There are record keeping requirements, but we have no real idea what they do since that is also left to the regulations. The risk assessment has to be documented, along with the compliance with the rules related to anonymized data risk management and mitigation, and also other records set on the regulations have to be kept. For high impact systems, a person who makes a high impact system available has to publish on the internet a plain language description of the system that includes an explanation of how the system is intended to be used and the types of content that it is intended to generate and the decisions, recommendations, or predictions that it is intended to make and the risk mitigation measures put in place and any other information that may be prescribed by regulation. And of course, how and when they do this will be set out in the regulations. Finally, a person who is responsible for a high impact system must notify the minister if the use of the system results or is likely to result in material harm. Of course, how to give notice is determined by the regulations. You'll likely not be surprised to learn that material harm and the definition of it is left to be defined in the regulations. As you can see, everything important in figuring out who this applies to and how it applies is unknown because we haven't seen those regulations. Does this materially affect your AI systems? Don't know. Assuming this does affect your AI systems, we really don't know how it will affect them. The whole regulatory scheme is significantly different from existing or planned digital reg regulation in Canada. Instead of being overseen by an independent officer of parliament, like our privacy and access to information laws, the minister can name a bureaucrat as the AI and data commissioner. They are an underling of the minister and not at all at arm's length. There is no appeal to the data protection tribunal. The bill does contain significant offenses and penalties. It is an offense to violate any of sections six through 12, which relate to anonymized data, assessment of high impact systems, measures related to risk, monitoring mitigation measures, record keeping, publication of descriptions and notification of material harm. So what activity becomes an offense is largely left to the regulations. Ah, but the penalties are not. The maximum penalty is the greater of $10 million or 3% of an organization's global revenue. The bill also provides for administrative monetary penalties, which are like offenses, but without due process. And of course, everything related to that will be set out in the regulations. The most detailed section of the bill is the one that authorizes the creation of regulations. Shocker. As I said before, this bill is an embarrassment. The government should yank it out of Bill C-27, go right back to the drawing board and actually consult with people who know what they're talking about in the field of AI. It's like they're trying to take a shortcut to the finish line of having an AI law on the books without regard to actually getting it right. This is important stuff that affects the lives of people in Canada and innovative companies. They should look at what's being done in Europe so that our approach is consistent with these emerging international norms. I hope this has been interesting and useful. I try to put out a new video every week or so, so if you're interested in this sort of content, please click the like and subscribe buttons. Also leave a comment if you have any questions or if you have a suggestion for other topics you'd like me to cover. And of course, feel free to share this with anyone who you think may be interested in hearing about developments in Canadian tech and privacy law. Thanks for tuning in.